Hello everyone, I'm Christopher Tan and welcome to Providence Money Wisdom, an original podcast inspired by my book Money Wisdom, Simple Truths for Financial Wellness. In this podcast, I'll be sharing simple financial truths to guide you in navigating through the minefields of misinformation and false promises in order to achieve financial security and peace of mind. The Wealth Management Minefield Part of our job as an independent wealth advisory firm is to evaluate the investment products and or proposals that our clients receive from the financial institutions that they have relationships with. When these proposals come to us, we always notice a common phenomenon. Clients are often sold an investment idea based on the latest investment trend. After a while, we can usually guess with high accuracy what investment plan our clients will be showing us even before seeing it. What appalls us most is that they are often asked to invest a substantial amount of their investable assets into it. To understand why this is the situation, you need to understand how this so-called wealth management game is played. The wealth management industry is mainly made up by three players. First are the product manufacturers such as the insurance companies and the fund managers that design insurance plans and investment products. The second are distributors such as the banks, insurance agents, financial advisors and online portals who sell these products. And thirdly, you, the consumer of the products that they produce for and distribute to. When you buy an investment product, you pay the front-end fees or otherwise known as commission to the distributors, the people that sell you the product. Then you pay annual management fees to the product manufacturers. Besides being paid commission for the products sold to you, the distributors also get a cut from the annual management fees that you pay to the product manufacturers. This is known as trailers. In addition, In order to motivate the distributors to sell their products instead of the competitors, some product manufacturers may even resort to paying soft commission such as providing computer terminals and paying for the marketing blitz of the distributors and giving incentives such as extra cash for top producers to the distributors. Nevertheless, for you as a consumer, after this whole chain of events, The only thing you can hope for is to get good returns for the product you invest in. How do some distributors get you to buy plenty of products, sometimes even with a substantial part of your wealth? Firstly, they may work on your weakness. One of our clients forwarded an email by his private banker to us. In that email, he was strongly encouraged to subscribe to a product that had no downside, unlimited upside. Before even delving into the details of the product, we knew that it had to be a capital guaranteed or protected structure. These products were invented to work on your fear of loss. When you invest in these products, usually a large proportion of your monies, maybe say about 70-80% to of it, Well, they are used to buy zero coupon bonds with the remaining invested into derivatives. At maturity, usually in the region of say three to five years, you get back at least your principal. So have these products done well? Well, yes, if you consider that it raised tens of millions for the distributors and product manufacturers each time. But If you really studied their performance, you might not be able to say that they had done well. Well, secondly, they focus on a speculative theme. Another client of ours was asked to invest in, well, this particular fund, in fact, a substantial proportion of her investable assets were asked to be invested into this fund. She was told that this particular region is now very hot 
and she should not miss this golden opportunity to invest in one of the fastest growing economies of the world. The fact is, month after month, new products chasing a certain investment theme are being launched. Many of these products are developed to work on the speculative nature of humans. Over the past decade or so, products such as technology funds, you or income generating funds, China India funds, currency theme and so on have been launched aggressively and sold to consumers. Commodities, energy funds as well as investment products focusing on luxurious brands and climate change have also joined the bandwagon. The reason for the launch of these products is the very reason why you should avoid it. Prices have gone up so high and everyone wants to get onto it. Many tech investors will remember the tech bubble burst in 2000. Their investments spiraled down as much as 80%. Ironically, most of them were also launched in the year 2000 itself. All of us need our wealth to be properly managed. What wealth managers should do for you is to meticulously study and understand your needs and carefully design an appropriate diversified investment portfolio that has little to do with the prevailing latest trend. Good managers should coach you on the risk and returns you should be expecting and help you monitor your investment closely, occasionally tweaking it to make sure it achieves your investment objectives. It is a long and tedious process. After all, this is what wealth management should be. Your wealth advisor should not be compensated by how fast and how many products they sell you, but by how much work they have done and how well they have performed for you. All of us are compensated the same way in our jobs. Why should it be different for those wealth managers who supposedly work for us? Sometimes, I get disillusioned by what goes on in the wealth management industry. But this game of wealth management can only be played when all three parties are involved. If you know how this industry currently works and choose not to be a part of it, there is hope for all of us. Remember, make sure wealth managers or wealth advisors work for you. They are paid to do so. Do not become a victim to bad wealth management practices. Now, I'm going to share a little bit about compensation because, well, it is compensation that drives a certain behavior. Have you ever walked along the streets and was stopped by someone promising you free air tickets only if you attended a one and a half hour talk? Have you ever received a free gift voucher from a shopping mall asking you to claim it from the gift counter? Have you ever been promised free cameras, computers and all sorts of other gifts when you buy a financial product at a roadshow or even over a financial institution's counter? Well, no prizes for knowing that all these comes with a catch or certain obligations. In the first place, well, you will know that it is probably a timeshare company trying to sell their packages. Well, for the second one, you will know that you will be asked to buy more things at the counter. In the third case, you will know that before you have your free camera or computer, you will have to buy that insurance policy or a certain financial product. I'm a skeptic. I believe that there is no free lunch. There is a price for everything. Now, even online portals are giving you free gifts if you buy a certain amount of product. So, is there such a thing as free financial advice? It is a rhetorical question, isn't it? Well, I think that there are three ways of getting financial advice. Generally, well, the first one would be commission-based. You may have heard of someone calling himself a financial planner promising to give you a free financial plan or report after your session with him. 
If your answer is yes, you are probably seeing a commission-based advisor. The commission-based advisor is one who makes a living by earning a commission through selling you financial products such as insurance policies, unit trusts, mortgages, etc. Many will argue that it is free advice since it is the product manufacturers and not the client that pays these product salespeople. This is not true. If you look at, say, for example, your insurance policies, you will notice that there are usually no cash values in the first few years of your policy. Besides, you are likely to be 97 cents invested for every $1 allocated for the purchase of a unit trust, well, sometime lesser, sometime more. This is because the monies are set aside to pay the so-called free financial planner or free advice by the financial planner who advise what products you needed to or should buy. How much do these advisors earn from giving you their advice? Well, if you buy, say, whole life insurance for your family that amounts up to $5,000 premium per year, he probably earns about $5,000 over a few years. Each time you transact a unit trust, or each time you buy one fund or you sell one fund and buy another one, well, this person may, well, say, get 1%, 2 or 3% of the amount you invest. That's the first way, the commission-based way. Now, the second way of getting financial advice is the fee-based advisor. This is a person who will charge you, say, a nominal fee. Well, say, maybe $100, $100, $500 or $1,000 for advising you. But on top of that, he is also paid commission. Well, maybe he is not, but the company may be paid a commission when you buy a financial product through him. Most of the time, these advisors will waive the fee if the product commissions is more than the fee payable. For example, if the advisor charges you $1,000 fee and he gets, say, $4,000 from commission through the financial products that he sells you, he will usually waive the $1,000 fee. The fee-based advisor is usually compensated more from product commissions rather than the fee he collects. Now, the third way is the fee-only or commission-free way, which is what Provident is all about. The fee-only or commission-free advisor is one who charges fees for giving you advice. The fees are pre-agreed upon between the client and the advisor based on the amount of work that needs to be done. If there are commissions being generated from product transactions, it is given back to the client. In this way, he is paid solely by the client for advising him and is accountable to him only. The fee-only advisor is what I call the I want to be paid for advising you advisor. So, who is compensated in which way? Broadly speaking, insurance advisors, bank relationship managers, private bankers and most financial advisors in Singapore are commission-based advisors. Their source of income is mainly through commission from financial products that they sell to you. If you do your transactions via the internet portals, do note that you could also be paying a commission to these portals. Some financial advisors in Singapore work under the fee-based structure. The perception of fee-based advisors is that they are more professional, as there is at least some compensation to these advisors, even if the clients do not want to obtain financial products through them. Although the fee-only compensation or commission-free model is perceived to be more professional, very few financial institutions in Singapore have gone this way. The reason is obvious. Commission-based advisory is too lucrative to give up, despite the potential conflict of interest between clients and advisors. Now, some advantages and disadvantages between these three compensation structures. From the client's perspective, well, firstly, commission-based. Commission's create a potential conflict of interest which can come between the client and the advisor. Firstly, as a client, 
how can you be sure that the advice given is objective and not motivated by commissions? Secondly, since the advisor is not compensated unless he sells you a product, you will also wonder, understandably, if the advice is product-driven. Thirdly, if the financial advisor gets a commission each time you transact, that is, when you move in and out of your portfolio of funds, you lose 1-3% to or less or more in sales charges. In addition, you might have actually paid more in commission as compared to the fees that you would have paid to get independent advice with a full commission rebate. So, are there no advantages at all? Well, actually, there are. If your needs are pretty simple, like getting yourself simple insurance coverage, or if you want to invest a small amount into, say, a balanced fund that needs no rebalancing, a commission-based advisor might be appropriate. You avoid paying a fee or multiple fees or commission by simply paying a small one-time commission to get product advice. Well, secondly, fee-based. In this method of paying your financial advisors, if the advisor is more interested to sell you products, you will experience the same disadvantages associated with paying commissions, similar to the commission-based instances. Meanwhile, you pay or you may pay a fee for advice that is fundamentally product-driven. For a fee-based advisory firm, you may wish to look through to see how the individual advisors are compensated. Now, fee-only or commission-based. The fee-only or commission-free approach works on the basis of paying for a professional to do work. The advantages are that you have the confidence as a client that the advice you get is not driven by any need to sell you a financial product. Secondly, you know that the financial advisory process is advice-driven and not product-driven since he is judged and based by how well he advises you and not by how much products he sell you. When a financial advisor charges fees only, you will have greater confidence that his focus is on delivering unbiased, competent and quality advice, since this is the only product that he is selling. Thirdly, from an investment portfolio standpoint, you need not incur multiple sales charges that will eat into your profits. Your overall cost of getting advice may even be lower than the commission-based approach since you save up a lot in not having to pay product commission or repeat commissions through ongoing transactions. Thank you for tuning in to Providence Money Wisdom. I will be back soon with the next episode. For more information on my book or Providence services, kindly visit Provident.com. I'll see you the next time. All analysis, views or opinions from interviews, recommendations and other information broadcasted, podcasted or published herein are provided for general information purposes only. Information expressed does not take into account any specific situation particular needs or objectives and should not be construed as specific advice or a recommendation. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal or tax professional before taking any action. Provident Limited does not accept any liability for any loss whatsoever arising from any use of the information broadcasted, podcasted or published herein. All contents and information contained herein may not be copied or reproduced in whole or in part by any means without prior written consent of Provident Limited.